Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast here with Father's Joy. I'm Abigail. And I'm Jacoby. And today we're continuing our series, The Armor of God. So we'll get more into that later. But first we have a little icebreaker. Just want to share our new addition to our family. You want to take and that? And we're not having a baby, so don't, yeah, don't get not it. that. <laughs> <laughs> but we also, we, uh, have, we a, have a dog baby, a, a fur little baby. baby, a puppy. So I was heading to a shoot like what, two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and as I was driving to the shoot, I saw someone putting down a sign and it said mini doodle. We always talked about we wanted to go and doodle, which now I think are kind of ugly <laughs> compared to what we have now. Uh, so I was driving there and um, I was on the phone with her actually at the time. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I just saw the sign for a doodle, a mini doodle. But as they were putting the sign down, they were covering the number so I couldn't see it. And I was going to be late to the shoot. So I had to go. I was like, all right, I'm going to come back right after the shoot. So I give it a call. And the lady's like, yeah, we have some puppies. Um they're actually named by, uh, after the Bible. So the dog, the puppy that we have now, his name is Jesus. And they had a family of puppies that are a litter of puppies. One of them was Jose, uh, Santo Cristo. Maria, Mar- Hallelujah, Nazareth. I forgot one was named Hallelujah. That's crazy. Yeah. They went to, she told me uh, when she was like giving me the pitch on the puppy, she was like, they go to sleep to Spanish Christian, oh, they wake up to Spanish Christian music. And they fall uh, asleep to meditation. Yeah. But we started having him fall asleep to soaking music. So it's like soaking Holy Spirit music <laughs> he falls asleep to. Yeah, man, wake up in the presence. <laughs> so, yeah, he's out. We're going to probably put some videos, photos up so you can see him. We would take him out the cage, but he's kind of quiet now. He's actually been a good pup. He's been trained. Personally, my first dog and, what, your third dog? Third, well, fifth, actually. Dang. But... Golly. Really, it's like my well, it's special. It's more special to me than she, she had five. I got <laughs> I was my first one, so being able to take care of him and pretend like basically have a child is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, this is my first time having a dog like just by myself with him, like us training it, taking care of it. I always had puppies like growing up. Like I had Tails, Oscar, and then at one point we had Jenna and Rusty. So I guess four. Rusty, you ain't never told me about Rusty. Yeah, Rusty. There's Probably a story behind that Rusty one. Isn't. There's a real story behind that one. Basically, it was when my parents got divorced, so my dad was trying to like, I don't know, make us happy and make him the fun parent, and he ended up getting the puppy. Man, it was a, a golden dog. retriever. My dad didn't know how to train it or take care of it, so it smelled disgusting. And then he ended up taking it to the pound. Uh, poor Rusty. Yeah, we poor need to Rusty. pray for Rusty. Lord yeah. Jesus, we pray for Rusty, and hopefully he ain't alone. I, I think they put him down. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. But anyways, I was young, so I didn't really know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> but we will never maybe do we that. we should talk about maybe, nah, <laughs> to our, nah, to, how to to our anyway, baby. Like, we can't close that story out so sad. Basically, we got a dog. He's, He's the amazing. He jumps around like a puppy throughout the house. <laughs> runs We're learning how to be surgery. parents. Learning how to be parents. And he's actually being obedient for the most part. For the most part. And, he's know. making progress. We're only being here, what, four days? I don't know. I feel like it's been longer than four yeah, days. Yeah, for him only being here four days, he's been doing really good. He's just sleeping in his crate right now. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> he's like, which is good because at first he wouldn't even go in his crate. Like the first night we had him, we slept on the couch because, you know, when you separate a dog from their litter to start, it's like they're having anxiety, especially labradoodles, anything with a doodle in it. They're known for like having really bad anxiety. So it was separate from his mom, separate from his siblings, all of that. So he was, like, whining throughout the whole night. So we had to come sleep on the couch. And when we slept on the couch, he calmed down. So he slept in his crate. But ever since then, we've had him in the crate every night. He whines for a little bit, like, maybe a minute. But after that, he's good. He's getting better day by day. Like, the first time we left, or the second time we left, that man was barking and howling. Like, he was mad that we were not here but I worked with him yesterday on training him in the crate, having him in there throughout the day so that way he gets used to it when we're not home. And today we left twice, and both times he was really good. We put him on FaceTime so we can see how he's behaving. But I feel like we're at the point where we can kind of put him in the crate and not have to worry about it. Like, he did really good today. So it's just cool because it's a new experience, and it's rewarding to see him, like, improving and doing better. And it's also rewarding to be able to do it with each other and parent a puppy together. Yeah, so that's our icebreaker. Welcome to the family, baby Jesus. It's weird calling a dog Jesus. It is like, a little weird. That's Jesus in Spanish for you guys that you know aren't fluent in Spanish. But the story was just too good. We can't change his name. Exactly. So when we went to go look at some other golden retrievers, like we didn't even pick it up. 
We didn't even take no photos. Honestly, when I saw it, I just wanted to leave. Facts. And they, this, the puppy that we have is so small. It's like 10 pounds right it's now. It's like a teddy versus bear. Versus the other one, and he's 12 weeks. And what's crazy is the day we moved into our apartment is the same day he was born. So I was mm-hmm. like, oh, snap. Ain't that ain't that a it's God like thing? God wanted to add every aspect of himself into our life, including when we got a dog. I was <laughs> like, how can we not get this? So when we And the price was great. It was a good price, and the lady's really nice. She like she says, uh, "I want to see my grand puppies. <laughs> like I want to have reunions with my grand puppies. All the owners coming together." And she's like, "She's been so nice to us." So it's been God great. bless Gigi. That's Gigi. Yeah. <laughs> but all right, let's go ahead and pray that we can get into this. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just thank you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We thank you for an amazing series so far. We pray that uh, for the people that have been affected by this and been ministered to, we just pray for the. One or the two people that will be affected by this episode today as we talk about uh, the shield of faith. Uh, we pray that this just plants seeds in their hearts, Lord, and just grows harvest in their uh, just in, in their families and their friend groups and their mind, Lord, that this seed would just be planted. Uh, and that they can just use the word of God just to speak against the enemy's plans. So, Lord, we just pray that it will be nothing about us but about you, that we decrease as you increase. And we pray this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. So like we've been doing for every single episode, we read Ephesians uh, 6, and that's the armor of God. And then we get into it. So it says in Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verse 10, Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when you when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand your ground, stand firm within the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which you can distinguish all flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the sword of God. And for, uh, lastly, verse 18, pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer requests. And with this in, uh, with this in mind, be alert, always keeping on praying in the Lord's peace or Lord's people. So I read that in. Today we're focusing on uh, verse 16 when it says, uh, take up the shield of faith, which can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And I feel like in today's society, that verse can like the flaming arrows can be uh, like a metaphor or simile for today's world of like people and what the world will say, like insults, um, like negative thoughts that might come from your family, might come from your friends, might come from the enemy. So what? Could you say, like, what is some things that people can do to strengthen their faith when all these arrows are coming at them from the outside world? I think the biggest thing to recognize is that if arrows are coming at you, that means you're doing something right. Because why would the enemy throw arrows at you if you weren't doing something correct? There's no reason you're not a threat to the kingdom of darkness. You're not a threat to him and his little demons. When you have arrows coming at you, that's how you know you are walking in faith and you are walking in the Lord's will because the enemy wants to attack that. He wants to defeat you. In John 10, 10, it says that he seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. And that is exactly what he's trying to do. And that is what those flaming arrows are. So if there isn't flaming arrows in your life, my question is, where does your faith actually stand? Are you even a threat to the enemy? Are you even on fire for God to the point where he thinks he needs to take you down? Like, you, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we always say, like, if you're not getting attacked, then you ain't doing nothing. You should yeah. be concerned. Um, I feel like the shield of faith allows you to block out all those lies um, mm-hmm. of the enemy and all the things that people say say about you behind your back, in front of you. And you're like, okay, I know who I am. Like, there's scripture for every single thing. We wrote some down. Like, if someone says you're ugly, you can say, well, I was beautifully and wonderfully made. Uh, and then someone says, like, I'm not fit to be used by God like who am I uh, look at Moses Moses was used look at Jonah Jonah was used and they were both at s- some point both were disobedient like Jonah definitely disobedient mm-hmm. but it just goes to show like if you continue to speak the word like I guess we I say this so much but if you just speak the word over every situation that you're in like if you're ugly I'm beautifully wonderfully made if I'm not fit for this you know God can't use me I can do all things through Christ who strengthens yeah. me uh, strengthens me and it's like continue to speak those things over you and like literally carrying a field a uh, shield of faith and that can literally simply be your your bible like you're Facts. literally walking with your bible Facts. to deflect all these things that the enemy's saying that your family's saying that your coach is saying it's like okay that is not true like i know who i am and that's when i think of shield of faith that's what i think of it's like a barrier to protect you mm-hmm. 
because these flaming arrows can come from anything. Yeah. You know? It makes me think of the Avengers in <laughs> Captain America. If you look at all the Avengers, all of them have their superpowers, whatever. But the one thing that Captain America's whole entire identity is based off of is his shield. So your whole identity should be based off your faith. Just like Captain America's <laughs> shield is that protection for him. You know, like you look at all these superheroes, you look at Spider-Man, he has his webs, you look at Iron Man, he has his technology that he's created. <laughs> you look at, I don't know, who else? Black Panther. He has yeah, Hulk just strong Hulk and just green strong. And like all of them have these natural gifted abilities where Captain America is literally his shield. If he doesn't have his shield, he is nothing. Mm. Just like with us, if we don't have our shield of faith, we are nothing. We don't have anything. Like, if we don't have faith, how can we continue? You know, how can we move? And also, Captain America, like, he goes into all these battles, all these wars, all these things happen to him constantly. It's, like, one thing after the next. So that shield is meant to be used. It's not meant to sit up on a shelf and collect dust. That shield of faith is meant to be used on a day-to-day basis when that spiritual warfare comes and that, attack of the enemy comes it's meant to be used and constantly at the forefront on your arms that way it can protect you your faith is protection from that war and who knew marvel could be so biblically like (laughs) i think what's crazy is like if you look at that shield and you watch all the captain america movies like he starts out with his shield being like boof and busted yeah literally having to scrap it on and then throughout the movies like they continue to build it make it stronger make it stronger iron man gives him one uh, Iron Man's dad or Tony Stark's dad gives him one mm-hmm. and it's like they continue to get a stronger shield and stronger shield and it shows you like if you continue to put that shield of faith in action it might break but guess what it's going to grow you stronger okay. and stronger and stronger yeah. and stronger and Marvel's preaching right now for some reason right <laughs> <laughs> yeah no definitely because it's like every single battle that comes against you is an opportunity for you to be made stronger and it's your choice if you just allow the dusty crappy shield of your baby faith to not protect you or you allow the war to come against you and you combat the enemy with that shield and your faith grows stronger because our faith grows stronger through those trials and tribulations knowing who god is and knowing that we can trust him and knowing that he is a sovereign father if we don't go through those trials and tribulations how can we develop that faith how can we develop that trust to know that he will succeed he will have the victory he will fulfill his promise And that goes straight into um, a chapter that we want to heavily dive into today, and that's Hebrews 11. It's the Hall of Faith. It's all these different people. It's like the Avengers of the Bible. Um, (laughs) But it's like the Hall of Faith. Hey, I promise you, I want to interrupt you. This woman don't even be wanting to watch. I be wanting to watch Spider-Man sometimes. She don't even be wanting to watch Spider-Man with me. She want to watch All-American and, I don't know, some other romantic comedies I'll watch i just them. be wanting to watch some iron man but all right i'm gonna let you you, you going crazy so that means we gotta watch some marvel tonight we can watch some marvel tonight that's fine yeah, some captain america in fact just not civil war i think civil war is the stupidest marvel movie created okay that was rude anyway i'm we're just gonna, saying we're not gonna you know marvel might try to cancel us for that i Go don't ahead. care Proceed. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense like have them going up against each other like i don't understand the point of that spider-man was in it that's why i, like I know it. i remember um <laughs> anyway Hall of Faith, Hall of Faith. (laughs) Hall of Faith. So it's practically the Avengers of the Bible. If you look at it, and it's like all these different people, time after time, that put their faith in Jesus, and because of that, a legacy came forth. If they were not put in this position where their faith was tested, they would have no legacy for people to look back at and look at, you know? And I think the same thing, dang, Marvel really preaching. Like, you look at Iron Man, he died for a purpose, and if he didn't, he wouldn't have been remembered. And that's the same thing with everyone in the Hall of Faith. Like, everyone in there died for a purpose, with a purpose, fulfilling their purpose, and they had faith through it. And because of that, they're in the Bible, and they're in this Hall of Faith, an example for how we should live. And he has a couple breakdown points. I have a couple breakdown points. So what was your main takeaways from that? First of all, we got to read it, the first scripture that speaks Hall of Faith. And that's Hebrews 11, uh, verse 1. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance in what we do not see. And for me, I feel like faith is like a leap into the darkness mm-hmm. and not knowing what's going to come, but like having hope in that. And then as you read through this, it like talks literally about every scenario of all these people that had faith but didn't know what was going on. They were just obedient. And so in verse 3, I'm just going to read through all of them so we can uh, break it down. Um, verse 3, by faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that when 
so that uh, what is seen was not made out of what was visible. And it's like, if you literally go to Genesis and it talks about in the beginning, God <laughs> created the heavens and the earth. Mm-hmm. Like, that's faith, literally in the beginning. Like, he spoke everything into existence. If there was nothing, he made something out of nothing. <laughs> like, so he didn't see nothing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, from what I'm reading, he didn't see nothing. He spoke all that into existence. So technically, that's faith, because man just spoke in spoke to what he didn't even see so off the bat they start off that um and then it goes into verse four and i like what you said it's like even when these people pass away their faith speaks for them and i see that in verse four because it says by faith abel brought uh god a better offering than cain did by his faith he was commended as righteous when god spoke well of his offerings and by by faith abel still speaks even though he is dead like even though he is dead it speaks so much more because, like, they didn't even know. Yes, they brought an offering to God, but they didn't even know what they were doing, really. Like, they just brought an offering, and Abel just happened to bring the better one. Abel, uh, Cain was mad because he wasn't able <laughs> to do the sacrifice. He wasn't able to bring uh, the first fruits that God was asking for. And guess what? You know, the man got jealous, envy, you know, greed took over, and he Facts. offed his brother. But it just goes to show, <laughs> like, his brother is yeah, crazy. Do, do off them. But, like, <laughs> it shows how th- his faith in that aspect of, like, simply just trying to please his father, where it got him. I mean, in the Bible, at least, where it got him, not like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he died. <laughs> Plot <And twist. laughs> he, he died, but I meant like in a spiritual pleasing sense for his father, like it got him. I'm sure like he's up in heaven because of that. And his story speaks even more. And I know you did a little bit more on the verse five of Enoch, but it says by faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away for he was taken uh, for before he was taken, he was commended as the one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes from him must believe him that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And with the story of Enoch, it's like this man must have lived like a perfect life. I think it said he was like 365 years old and then God just took him up there. And it's like, how faithfully can you walk that God saw no sin in you, <laughs> that you literally just like elevate, <laughs> go, up, go up to heaven. Game it's over. like. It's just like, bro, that's crazy. Um, and I think this one's really cool. Verse 7, by faith Noah, when warned about things uh, yet seen in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. Uh, by his faith, he was conde- uh, condemned. By his faith, he condemned the world. And because of that, hear of the righteousness that is that is in keeping in faith. An heir? Oh, it's an heir? An heir. Like an heir to the throne, heir of inheritance. Yeah. Yeah, not here. <laughs> oh, shoot. I guess I need I dropped out, y'all. <laughs> I dropped out. Well, basically, dude was an heir. Because he's, I just think that was cool. Like, if you look at the definition of that, it's like he's a, uh, he he is the, I wouldn't say one of the founding fathers, but because of his faith, like, he established that for his family. Can you, under, like, God's about to tell you, he's about to flood the whole world. Like, people probably think, you crazy. You out here going in the forest, building an ark. We watched this, um, it wasn't a documentary, it was a movie called Noah on Netflix. Um, and God's like giving him these crazy dreams and these crazy visions. And the guy just like, all right, well, I keep seeing these visions. Like God's going to flood the earth. And, uh, like there's a bunch of blood and a bunch of chaos going around around me. And then dude just starts to build an ark and people are like, Hey, what's going on? What you doing? And he's basically saying, Hey, God tried to warn you guys to like turn your turn around from your evil ways. But yet y'all keep trying to do what you want to do. And People start to attack him. They try to get on the ark, and then they start falling off. Joe just goes so sideways, and it's like, I can't imagine the faith that Noah had to have to, like, be so cutthroat to say, no, only only my family can get on this ark. Only the two animals of each kind can get on this ark. Like, can't get three. Sorry for the other animals. Sorry for, you know, (laughs) I can't even imagine. And just him being so righteous uh, to, like, stand up for what was right and what God was telling him, that's faith alone. Well, I know for Noah, it says um, something about, yeah. By faith, Noah being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen in reverent fear, constructed an ark for saving of his household. So it's like, yes, not only was he walking in the righteousness of God, but he was walking in the fear of the Lord. Like it was reverent fear that led him to do that. Like if he didn't have fear of the Lord and what he can do and what he will do, he wouldn't have built that ark. And the reason why... 
all these people died during the flood is because they had no reverent fear toward God. They were like, Psh, he ain't going to flood the earth. Like, they thought Noah was crazy. They're like, what are you doing building an ark? Like, we haven't seen rain. Like, this doesn't make any sense. And it's because he actually feared the Lord, whereas the others didn't. They were so focused on self, you know? No, for sure. Um, I think that's important what your faith is having a fear of the Lord and a confidence in him, knowing that we can't do this life on our own. And that's simply why we have to walk in faith because some, simply sometimes some things just don't make sense. So he's like, okay, I need my faith to arise because this this situation don't make sense. I don't know how I'm going to get here to here. I don't know how this financially going to happen. I don't know how I'm going to get to like, you know what I'm saying? Um and I'm sure in verse 8, that's how Abraham was feeling. It says, by faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place, he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed, and went even though he did not know where he was going. Like, I can't imagine, like, picking up my wife, my nephew, Lot, and say, all right, we're just going to go wherever that a God that I never talked to is telling me to go. And I, his name before it was Abraham was Abram. And it says, Abram had his name changed to Abraham, for he was made a father of many nations. God was keeping his word before in chapter 12, God first promised Abram through uh, that he will make him into a great nation and make uh, his name great, and he will be the blessing. And it says, if he moves by faith and follows him. He was 75 years old at the time with the wife. Like, dude, 75, and God telling him to do all this. I'm like, bro, I'm towards the end of my life. Like, what you doing? And I think what he lived to like 300. I don't know. That man was an old man, but God, yeah. God yet still kept his promise. Um, what was another one I wanted to read? Because there's so many. I think this one's really cool. It's literally the next scripture after. And it says his wife, uh, even Sarah, who was even in or verse 11, and by faith, even Sarah, who was past the age of childbearing, was enabled to bear a child because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And originally, before he, she even had the baby, she literally laughed at him. Mm -hmm. And she named Isaac. Uh, she named the son Isaac because well, I think she was like 90. What was it? She, she was at she was old she was at an old age and she literally laughed at God because she didn't believe that she could have a child like into the point where she took it into her own hands he said okay God said she's gonna, I was gonna have a child but yet she wasn't acting in faith she said okay I'm gonna have a baby and that's when they ended up having Ishmael yeah. and from there God was like okay that's not where I wanted that was not where my promise was that's not where my blessing was so she ended up having a baby and after with Abraham the right way what God God called it to be. And ended up naming him Isaac. And Isaac, if you look up the name, it means laughter. And laughter came from when she was laughing at God because God said she was going to have a baby. And yet she was able to stand on that promise that God spoke into her life that you're going to have a baby just in his timing. And I think it's so important that we trust God. Like we have to move by faith and trust God because sometimes if we act in our flesh and act prematurely, we're missing the blessing. We're blocking yeah. the blessing that's going to come. But I think what's crazy is that we're never going to be able to block God's blessings because although – she took things in her own hands and her flesh and had Ishmael. God still brought forth the promise that she told him or that he told her was going to happen. Yeah. Like she still had Isaac. It was just in his timing. So sometimes we have to trust the promise that God has spoken to us and understand that it's going to come. <laughs> like he, just he might, not might not be when you think it will. Yeah. He's a good God. He never lies. Like it's just on his timing. Mm -hmm. and we have to understand that. Yeah. And when I was reading Hebrews 11, I kind of, went person by person and I saw what faith like what faith takes and then what faith gives back so I broke it down like person by person so in Hebrews 11 if you look at literally the first thing it says is now faith is the assurance of things hoped for the conviction of things not seen so first and foremost faith takes conviction it takes seeing and trusting in the Lord. Like, you might not see it physically, but a conviction to believe and a conviction to know that he is God. And then, literally the first person, Abel. We look at, by faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. So, faith takes righteousness. And furthermore, Enoch, it says, he had a heart to please God. Noah was reverent fear. Abraham was obedient. Sarah was trust. It takes a boldness to speak and to stand. It takes an internal mindset, a desire for eternity. It takes testing. It takes no fear from Moses. It takes endurance and refusal of the enemy. If you look in chapter 11, all of these things are outlined. It's like, okay, so Abraham obeyed. And by faith, Sarah trusted. And by faith, they were bold to speak up and to stand, these people in the hall of faith. And they had to have a focus on 
a better country, a better mindset, eternal mindset. By faith, all these people had to go through testing. By faith, they had to have no fear and not be afraid when things came against them. By faith, they had to refuse the tactics of the enemy and they had to endure. So this is literally outlined there. I encourage you to go and read Hebrews 11 in your own time alone time and you'll see like all these things are what faith takes faith happens through conviction righteousness a heart to please god reverent fear obedience trust boldness eternal mindset testing no fear endurance and refusal of the enemy but however when you walk in that demeanor faith gives back so with abel he was righteous and because he was righteous because he gave a righteous offering to god what happened it says at the end of that verse for abel Though he died, he still speaks. So it gave Abel legacy. Because he was righteous in his faith, God gave him legacy. Then we look at Noah, and he had heirs of righteousness because of a reverent fear to please the Lord. Sarah, it says that she received power. She, let me see, what verse is Sarah in? 11. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. So because she trusted in the Lord, because she believed he would make it happen, she received that power. Faith brings fulfilled promises. For Isaac, it brought future blessings. He had the 12 tribes, and all his sons is what created, or not Isaac, my bad. Isaac was the one that gave birth to Jacob, and then Jacob came the 12 tribes, so he was able to bless his son, even though it was meant to be Esau, that's a whole other story, but Jacob got the blessing, and because of Isaac's obedience, he was able to have that future blessing. For Moses, it was protection, and the Lord protected him. He parted the Red Sea. He did all these things. Faith also gives conquering kingdoms, stopping the devil, strength, and mightiness in war, like you might have all these different attributes of faith, but when you walk in it, it gives back. It gives back all these things that are so much bigger than the natural, and they turn into the supernatural and things that are higher than the earthly realms. It's part of the heavenly realms, having legacies and righteousness and power and fulfilled promises and blessings. None of this comes without faith, without believing in God, without knowing who he is. It also goes back to in Ephesians chapter 6 where it talks about the shield of faith will protect you from the flaming darts of the enemy. In Hebrews 11, it talks about conquering kingdoms, stopping the devil, having strength, and being mighty in war. Because of all of the faith that they had, they were able to combat the enemy and the flaming darts so they could conquer those kingdoms and walk in that strength. You know, that was a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, that was a mouthful, but it was really good. And after um, listening to all that, you know what's crazy and they all have in common? All those are in the Old Testament. Like, yeah. that was before Jesus even came. Well, that goes back to even at the end of chapter 11, it says in verse 39, and all of these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised. Let me say that again. Back it up. Verse 39, and all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised. Since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. You were just saying this is all in the Old Testament, so this is before Jesus, and Jesus is the ultimate promise. So here it's saying, like, they didn't receive what was promised. They didn't receive the promise of Jesus, the victory that Jesus gave us on the cross, the freedom of our sins, the penalty for our sins, the death that he took. So mm -hmm. it's like they didn't even receive the promise, and they still walked in faith. They didn't know the promise. They didn't know. Well, they knew there was a Messiah that was to come, but they didn't have access to that, yet they still walked in faith. So it's like, how many times do we not walk in faith, yet we have the promise? Mm. We have the word of God. We have Jesus who died on the cross. We have access to the Holy Spirit, the power of God that lives inside of us. We have the attainability to be with him, yet we don't actually take that promise that the Lord fulfilled for us. These people didn't even have that. They had to make sacrifices with the animals. They had to go into the Holy of Holies, into temples, into these places to speak with God. Moses was on a mountain when a fire came down, which was God, to speak with him. And Moses was the only one that spoke face-to-face -face with God during that time. None of those other people did. 
In fact, they made a golden calf because they didn't believe in what Moses was trying to do on that mountain with God. They started worshiping another God. Yet, all these people had faith even though they didn't have the promise of Jesus, the promise of freedom, the promise of heaven, the promise of victory here on earth and in heaven eternally from death to life spiritually. Like, what? <laughs> we just walk in this? Yeah. I, like, mean, I feel like it also shows what we take for granted from facts. all the knowledge that we have today and what we know. They was literally moving by faith. Not that we can't move by faith today, but we have the Bible. We have the word of God that's mm -hmm. right here so we can read all these things, see what happened in the past, see what he's doing today. But, yeah, they was literally moving by faith because they didn't know. Yeah, they might have heard the stories like Moses might have heard the story of Abraham. And, you know, like, but I think about Peter walking on water, seeing Jesus in his face, having faith to walk on water, like Joseph having faith when his brothers had betrayed him to, like, continue to still walk and uh, going in prison and still have faith to like stay strong and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even though that's not referred to in, in the Hebrews 11 in the Hall of Faith. Yet, I feel like it should be in there because like that takes so much faith to be out there on your own and yet be thrown in a furnace and say, yeah, I trust in God, not knowing what's about to happen, yeah. but they put their trust in God, knowing that God was going to save them. And there's so many people like Joshua, t God telling him to be st stay strong and courageous, literally right after coming after Moses and what Jonah jumping into the water, not knowing that a, uh, a whale was going to swallow him yet yeah. having faith, knowing that God, not knowing that God was going to use him to change the whole heart of the, the whole heart of the city of Nineveh. Like there's so many aspects of things that you just don't know mm -hmm. until you walk in it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you're not taking a leap in the dark. You're taking a leap in the hope, knowing that God is going to protect you and uh, lead you in the right direction. Yeah, I agree. And so basically like, what I'm trying to get across with Hebrews 11 is, like, read it, number one. Two, break it down. Three, look at these people as examples. And four, remember what the Lord has promised you. Like, remember that he's given this to you. We have free access to his spirit. And one thing I wanted to mention, because we're talking about the shield of faith, is who do you put your faith in? And what do you put your faith in? Because that determines how strong your shield is. Like, if you put your faith in science... That shield is not bulletproof. If you put your shield in addictions, that shield is not bul bulletproof. If you put your shield in Jesus, in the Lord, in your faith, that shield is bulletproof to combat the attack of the enemy. Do you think that faith only exists when you know God, or does faith exist in every area? Well, technically, according to Hebrews 11, what it was saying... Um, it says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes from him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Um, and that's verse six. I think there's a difference between like faith and like confidence. I would say mm -hmm. like faith is when you're like truly relying on God and moving by what his word says, relying in his promises and relying in his word. And like, obviously to have faith, you want like to abide in his word because you, that, that empowers you to have faith because you know the promises. One, you see what he did before and what he's going to do today. You see the promises in the Bible. You see what it says in the word. Um, like Simple things is like I was telling this to my little brother the other day. Uh, I've been trying to help him with like a devotion. He's eight years old, but yet knows a lot. And I was telling him about um, in Matthew when it says like where two or more gather. And he says where two or more gather, I am there. So we're praying together. I'm letting him know that God is with us as we're praying. And, like, you, I believe that's faith, knowing that he's with us, because that's what the word says. Yeah. I can believe what he says. You see them red letters? <laughs> that's Jesus. Right, right. He's right there. So I think that's different from confidence, because confidence is when you have hope in yourself. But it says in Hebrews 11, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And that hope is in Jesus. That hope is in God, knowing that he's going to prevail. Yeah. And I think also I just want to, like, piggyback a little bit off that it's like we have faith knowing that god is with us but i kind of want to give the what would the word be like the other side of things if you are atheist if you are agnostic whether you like to hear it or not that still takes faith mm -hmm. it might be a different way of faith god it's not faith in, in god but like if you literally believe that there is no god in the universe you have faith that there is no god in the universe like you don't see it you just think it you don't see that God did or did not create the world. You just think that it did. And so 
that's just combating like yes we have faith in christ but whether you're christian or not you have faith in something just like our pastor always references you have faith when you sit on a chair to believe it's not going to fall through you just sit on it you have faith in the chair you're like it's not going to break i'm just going to sit on it we good we gucci like you don't even doubt it for a second when you pull out a chair or you go to a church service or you go to a restaurant you sit on the chair you fully believe and you have faith that it's not going to break and fall through so everybody has an ounce of faith inside of them and it's just a matter of what you put your faith in and it takes faith to be atheist it takes faith to be agnostic it takes faith to believe in anything like agnostic is believing there is a higher god okay now what you have faith there is one go and explore go and read the word of god and recognize that this is the one true living god so just a little (laughs) other side of things is like faith is bigger than just the bible faith is made by god designed by god and because of it all of us have some sort of faith inside of us whether we realize it or not um, as you read throughout the Bible, like you look at all these disciples mm-hmm. and all the people throughout the Bible that had faith, and I have a list of them, like Peter walking on water, Andrew, John, and Peter leaving their job to follow Jesus, Matthew following Jesus after leaving his job, and he was a tax collector, so he made good money, although people hated him, but he left that job for a reason. Nathaniel not believing in him until Jesus spoke, uh, spoke about him being under the fig tree, uh, Paul moving by faith uh, when he was blind. Like this man is literally blind on the road to where Damascus Dude gets blinded, and yet he hears God speaking to him, says, go to talk to this guy, Ananias, and Ananias hears him. It's like, imagine if those two didn't move by faith. But you have that situation, and then you have in Luke 9 where the lady is healed by her faith, like the um, lady that's been bleeding for like 12 years, I believe. And all she literally did was touch touch his cloak, touch his robe. What do you think they all had in common to, like, leave, obviously leave their family, leave their whatever they were doing for Jesus? Um, and even this woman that wanted to get healed, like, what do you think they all had in common? I think a desperation. Like, we talk about it, even last episode we had when we did a recap on Brazil, like, it's different when you have a desperation. Like, I feel like in Brazil, people just have a desperation for Jesus that a lot of people don't have in America. Why? Because we have access to so many things that other countries don't. And for the girl that was bleeding, for example, like she had a desperation to be healed. So she was like, why not? I've done all these things. I've gone to all these doctors. I've been bleeding for 12 years. I've tried everything. I've been banished by my family. I have nothing left. Like she was at a place of desperation and that's where faith took place. It's having faith, knowing that God will do it when nobody else will. And even like people like the disciples, it's a desperation. Like they met Jesus. They're like, who is this guy? Like He's over here doing all these signs and wonders. I've never seen that in my life. And then more than just that, simply the words that Jesus spoke was so different than what they were used to. It was so pure and so loving compared to all of these rituals and rules that they had grown up on. It was something different. It was a tangible presence of love. And until you get to a point of desperation where you're like, I need that love, you will never receive it. You will never walk in that faith, if that makes sense. No, that makes sense 100%. Um, I like how you said it was like a desperation. Mm-hmm. My take on it is like they literally had nothing else. Desperation, it's like, same thing, yeah. <laughs> like they had nothing to lose, and it's like Paul, he had nothing to lose. Dude was blind. Facts. Um, literally the lady, when I was, I was reading that in Luke 9 with the lady getting healed, I think it's so cool because you look at her situation, and obviously she's went to so many doctors and everything and she's been through so much but it's like yes her faith got her healed but jesus after jesus already knew who it was that touched him and was healed and who uh who got healed but yet he made a whole scene and said who was that and he made he had like if you watch the chosen you see the scene he like literally has like a whole moment to where he's like it slow mo's he turns around he's like i feel the i felt my power leave me and the same power that he felt leave is the same power that she felt into her when she was healed. Yeah. And I think what's really cool about that is like, yes, her faith healed her, but it was her humility when she came forth and said, okay, Jesus, it, it was, was me. me. Yeah, got on her knees and humbled herself before him. It was her humility that he honored. Yeah, that's good. I like the way that you broke that down. Cause it's like God honored that humility because she was okay to say like, I'm literally at ends me and I have nothing else to do. I think God likes the heart posture of surrendering and oh, being vulnerable with 100%. him. Like, that's where the transformation happens. What do you believe the difference is between faith 
and relationship versus religion and doctrine. I mean, uh, you can relate it similar to what you were saying with the, like, you look at the Pharisees and you look at Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like, I think what the difference is is that they were, the reason that the Pharisees didn't know Jesus was the Messiah is because they were looking at law, religion, and they were looking at it so, like, this, this, it has to be this way, it has to be that, it has to be this. And then they literally missed Jesus because of their heart posture that they had. And I feel like the difference, the difference between faith and religion is like faith, it takes, it took faith for them all to follow Jesus. Yeah. Like the word and the scrolls and stuff back in the, uh, in the old times is like, obviously that was so ancient. Like that's all they had to follow. But yeah, Jesus comes saying he is the law of Moses. He comes and saying like, no one comes to the father except through me. It's like, okay, obviously he's saying some crazy stuff contrary to what the people and the Pharisees are used to like hearing obviously those are the rabbis and teachers that are supposed to know stuff so of course they're going to feel insulted feel some type of way like who is this guy like I went to school for this like this is my job this whole my whole life now this one guy who was a carpenter when he was a kid talking about this but yeah he's doing all these miracles he's healing paralyzed man like he's um what healing leprosy and he's eating with sinners and he has these uh whole group of sinners following yeah. him and it's like he has a ninja called Simon on his team like what's going on and I think it took more faith to believe Jesus is in his whole team than more faith to believe these Pharisees Yeah, because it's like he's obviously doing what's against the world at that time Yeah, and I feel like obviously you have the word of God that they followed but yet they were missing the prophecies that they talked about in Isaiah mm-hmm. and like Isaiah 53 and they, when they talk about the prophecies, and I can't believe the branch of Jesse where it talks about that. I think that's Isaiah 43. I can't, don't quote me on that, but it's Isaiah something. And I think they were missing that. Like, yes, that's doctrine, but like their religion and their ways of being so like stuck up is like what kind of caught them, blocked their eyesight from Jesus. Yeah. And I think also I want to correlate faith and relationship. If you look at the disciples, what was the key factor to their faith? Their relationship with Jesus. And that's how it is with us. Like, our faith grows when we develop a relationship with Jesus. Every single person in the Bible that believed in Jesus, that had faith in Jesus, that just simply saw him, they admired him, they were inspired by him. When they saw him, they wanted that relationship with him. The crowds ran to hear from him, to speak to him, to have a word simply with him, like face-to-face conversation with Jesus. And it was that relationship that increased their faith. And same with the disciples, like they're with him day to day, every night in and out. They're seeing all of this happen. So their faith was developed. So when you have a relationship with Jesus, a relationship with the Holy Spirit, that's when your faith comes up and it rises up because you realize, oh, this relationship is so much bigger than religion. This relationship is what is guiding me to trust in who he is and who he says he is because he will make his way in my life the way that he chooses to. So having a relationship with God is what develops that faith to protect you, to have that shield from the enemy and the tactics of him. Nah, for sure. As we wrap up, what are some things that you think someone could practice their walk of faith with God? Getting in the word. Like I said, faith and relationship correlate. If you do not get in the word of God, if you do not pray, if you don't have a relationship, your faith is going to go stagnant. Yeah. The other thing I would encourage you to do is like, Don't be afraid to ask God for the big things. Like so many times we minimize what God can do and we put him in a box. But if you have faith and you believe that it will happen, if it isn't God's will, it will happen. Like for me, one of the biggest things is when we went to Brazil, we saw these miracles break out. It was because of faith. And I'm like, wow, this is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I haven't seen people healed like this before. Like we were living in the book of Acts over there. But I realized like it's so common for us to put God in a box but I would encourage you to believe that the same God that is in this Bible the same God that wrote that breathed this and spoke it and did all these miracles is the same God that lives today so when you read this don't just read it so you can merely be like oh that's a cool story but read it and be like you know what God can do something similar in my life God can move in my life. If he did all of this, why wouldn't he want to do it in my life, you know? So rise up in that and just know who he is. I think faith also, you develop faith when you know who God is. If you don't know who God is, how do you know what to believe in? 
yeah. faith, you have to know who he is. You have to know his identity. You have to know his character. You have to know his love. And that comes from reading the word of God. That comes from understanding what he did for us, the gospel and its fullness and how Jesus died for us. If you don't even believe in that, you will not have faith. So, yeah. yeah it's really good. It's like, what do you have faith in if you don't know him? Right. I think number one would be obviously having a relationship with him. Getting We can say getting your word, but like having a pure relationship with him where you can like pray to him every day where like you can do things and recognize, okay, that's the God's voice. That's what, that's a, I think when you build a relationship with God, you oftentimes go through situations, but okay, that wasn't just coincidence. That was God. Yeah. No, that was God. Like the simple thing with Jesus, that was God. Like what what our, the dog's name is Jesus. Like we said before, simple things like, simple things like that. And also what she was saying is like, don't be afraid to ask him for the big things, but also don't be afraid to ask him for the little things. Like you can literally pray something that's so small and he can do it he look, he can do it and that shows that he hears everything it relates to the scripture right here it says in first john chapter 5 verse 13 i write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of god so that you may know that you have eternal life chapter uh, verse 14 says this is the confidence we have in approaching god that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us and if we know that he hears us whatever we ask we know that we have what we have asked of him and it's like obviously you want to ask according to his will so it's like don't just pray and pray for anything but like ask according to his will like obviously what ask for your purpose in life like ask him why you're on this earth ask him what's next for you in the next in the season that you're in like ask for things like that and obviously like it says um that he's a good father he only wants to give you good gifts i think that's matthew 7 7 or Matthew 7, somewhere, somewhere in Matthew 7. Mm-hmm. But that's that's all I have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, yeah, next we're going to be into the uh, helmet of salvation. Hopefully we have a special guest. I was trying to talk to him and see if he'll be on. But if not, he'll probably be on the, uh, the last one in verse 18 about praying in the spirit. We about shall see what happens. We'll see, we'll see what happens. But pray for us, guys, um, and we'll be praying for you. Let us know how this episode has and this whole series has affected you guys administered we like to have uh hear feedback and hear from you guys so with that being said god bless you and we'll see you on the next one